today we're talking about, and you, as you can see there, about seed investing in the UK. In particular, we've got this question uh, that it's popping around in the industry a little, which is, a UK VCs lose in courage? And the reason we're asking this question is because some data points towards a little problem uh, with the seed stage. And we'll get into that in a minute as we progress the talk. Uh, however, before I get anything started, just wanted to thank Birmingham Tech Week for having me here today. And great to, to see that despite COVID and everything, uh, they're still organizing such a such an amazing event. Uh, in particular, I wanted to thank uh, Yanis and Jonathan from the team that made this possible, uh, and my friend Felix, uh, who has actually helped this this talk coming into place with uh, with the London Birmingham Tech Week. Uh, and so, thank you, Yanis, Jonathan, thank you, Felix, and thank you to the whole Birmingham Tech Week team. Uh, of course, also thank you for all the sponsors of the Birmingham Tech Week in the first place and all of the partners uh, that made this event possible. Uh, and as for myself, like I said, Francesco from Silicon Roundabout Ventures and the Silicon Roundabout Tech community. Uh, and so without any further ado, let's get into today's topic. Uh, so being online, uh, probably, you know, it's going to be more of an informal session. Uh, but let's get through it because uh, I want to. I want you to really see what's happening out there and what potentially are the implications for you, whether you're a startup founder, whether you're just part of the ecosystem and want to get part of it or even an investor. But let me start by telling you a little story. And this story started in 2011 when the Silicon Roundabout meetup started. And I don't know if you can see that picture out there, but that was pretty much the London tech scene at the time. Uh, and I would probably argue that at the time it was pretty much the UK tech scene in the sense that there wasn't really much going on in London or anywhere else. Uh, it was just a bunch of engineers and founders getting together in a pub. Uh, and if we, if we look at the amount of startups that became unicorn produced in the decade up until the end of the decade, just ended in you know, 2010. In 2011, it was still stuck there and it was two, just two. Then fast forward to 2018, again, just by organizing meetups and connecting people. Uh, and all along, I've been programming most of this time as an engineer myself, uh, mostly for startups, actually. Uh, we've seen the scene grown. I mean, we've become pretty much by chance, you know, by, by virtue of the scene growing so fast, the largest tech meetup community in Europe. And in the meantime, parallel to that, we've seen the UK just paralleled in, in explosion with 31 unicorns created in this decade that he had not even finished, uh, which was obviously, a, I would say, a little bit of a jump from before. Uh, and in 2020, it's actually gone even more berserker because now we are Silicon Roundabout, and again, we're just a meetup community in the broader ecosystem. We're seeing like about 5,000 startups a year between actually meeting them or talking to them online or, uh, or them uh, asking to join the community. Uh, and Parallel to that, in literally one year, eight new unicorns were formed. Um, and so, you know, we decided to pretty much leave everything we were doing before and to launch a venture fund because, again, we've seen a lot of potential from this ecosystem. And we wanted really to help out the startups that we had seen grow all along and now needing even more support. But apparently, not everyone thought that way. And we're going to see in a second why. But before we get there, what fueled this growth? I mean, how did the UK get from where it was in 10, 2010, 11 into what it is today? Uh, and of course, Europe in general grew, but the UK is just alone pretty much twice as big as any other market in Europe. So how is it possible? I want to volunteer, just someone from there, from you guys, I see you there. Just like the first one, like one thing, one word, what could it be the cause? Don't be shy. In the chat, anything, the first thing that pop into mind, what fueled this growth? Like, for example, Sophia, that again, I see everything from here that just joined in. What fueled the UK growth in the last 10 years? Just one word. 
out of so many of you, like I just want to volunteer, one that says whatever. No, no glue. Don't worry, guys. I'll give you an answer uh, because again, we've seen it pretty much move all this along. Right? I mean, pretty much if you are building startups, you will need cash. And if there is no cash available to fund your growth, you're probably going to struggle a lot to become a unicorn. Of course, if there is money available and you can get funding, it's much easier. But there has been a little trend happening here. Uh, and it's not a question. There's not a, you know, there is a question mark there and it's not a by chance that I put it there. Uh, and if you've been reading the title of the topic, you might guess what's happening there. What's happening there is that even though you see there has been this massive growth, now we're seeing a dip. But we're not seeing a dip everywhere. And this is the interesting part. Capital going into venture is actually growing overall. There is more money available. There is more deals being done. It's seed stage, which is taking a dip. And this is pre-COVID, so we can't blame it on that. People have been invested, investing less in seed startups for the last two years. Uh, 2020 is continuing the trend, but also that trend started beforehand. And that is for money invested and number of deals. So why is that? There's more money available, more money going into venture, more venture funds being started. Everything is great, but startups are receiving less money, at least certain type of startups. So let's start just by going with educated guesses, right? Crowdfunding, maybe people are investing less. No, they're not. More money going there. Angel investing has pretty much remained the same around the 2 billion more or less for the last five years. We know that from the AS and SEIS record, I mean, not all investments going into that category, but it's a good metrics of the angel appetite. Uh, and so that can't be. So what do you think? I'm going to ask, uh, well, my colleague, industry colleague, uh, Martin, at the time he was uh, head of marketing at Syndicate Room. I believe now he's left that post. But at the time he said something very insightful, which is he noted that institutional investors and what he meant by that is VCs effectively are moving progressively to larger and bigger deals, which also means later stages. And that is creating a little bit of a gap because crowdfunding is there, angel investing is there, getting early money, plus you know there is ground funding out there. It's not necessarily a problem. Getting growth stage money is not also a big problem if you have the right metrics, because there is more and more money going into the ecosystem. There is this gap in there, which is starting to appear. We call it in, in the ecosystem, in, in the industry, the value of death. And why do we call it the value of death? Uh, well, a couple of reasons, but what, why does it matter in the first place? It matters because valuations, not just in the UK, but in Europe in general are growing. They've been growing and they continue to grow irrespective of COVID. I mean, this is data that we pulled out ourselves from PitchBook when we sent out, I think it was the August uh, investor report to investors uh, for our venture funds that we're raising. And, you know, PitchBook doesn't lie. It's just what it is. Valuations are going up. 2020 is, 2020 is not finished, but even including the sort of second quarter valuation still went up uh, and therefore this sort of value of debt is becoming a value of debt because it's increasingly bigger and it's harder and harder to jump you can think of vcs climbing up the bigger deals and angels effectively if you look at angels yes there is angel money but again looking back at the data that we pulled before you know from the british business bank on eis and SIS, the av the median uh ticket for an angel is 45,000, pulling together a one, two, three million round, which is what the new valuations are starting to demand and also offer, it's harder for to, to, to do. And therefore, there is a problem. And that's where a lot of startups are now getting stuck. And if it, they don't get out, then you fail. This gets worse if you're outside of London. And I thought that this is a particular insi insightful thing to note uh, at the Birmingham Tech Week, because 
irrespective of the great initiatives done in Bristol, Manchester, Edinburgh, and of course, Birmingham, there is still a huge amount of deals that is only done in London. Most investors are in London. And from experience, I can tell you, a lot of the people out there don't even look outside. I mean, they would, they wouldn't turn away a deal that comes to them, but the reach is not as strong. And therefore it's much less likely that a deal is done in the first place. So that's, you know, kind of makes it even worse. So what can we do about it? I mean, if you're religious, you know, you, you kind of have an opportunity there. Uh, if you're religious and pragmatical or uh, you're not religious, then you might want to start to wonder about who is it that's talking. Uh, what I mean by that is that if you're a startup, if you're an entrepreneur working at an early stage startup, or if you're an investor, or if you're everyone else, probably what can we do about it changes. And it also changes in the sense that, you know, your interest to it would probably be different. I mean, if you're a startup, you probably want to know how do I survive the value of death? If you're an investor, you're probably asking yourself, why shall I go to the value of death is all if others are getting out of it? And for everyone else, why should they even care? Well, for startups, this is the tip that I can give you, speaking as someone that is currently reviewing decks for the post launch of our fund, but also as someone who has seen loads of funding rounds happening in the community for the last five years in a very systematic way, I would say, from angels and VCs alike, know your investors. There is a massive difference, and I say a very massive difference between investors, and knowing the difference can really help you get through the, this phase. What I mean is, for example, that if you have an MVP or a good pitch and you can show that you have a problem that is worth solving, which is basically if your problem is painful enough for a certain customer segment that your company, by solving it, would have access to hundreds of millions in revenue. Let's not get around that. That's what you need to target as a startup. If you do that, you should probably be able to get a pre-seed check, but it's a pre-seed check. So if that's what you're targeting and that's what you have to offer, don't shoot for 20 million valuations or 50 million valuations. I mean, if you need that funding, it's pre-seed. And if you have that to offer, of course, not everyone will be on the same boat and you might have more to offer uh, or you might have gone past the pre-seed, that's great. I'm just saying that if you are in that bracket of having you know, the MVP and these other few things, you, know, you will be speaking to uh, angels, accelerators, incubators, and you're probably gonna get a little bit, hit, a little bit of a hit on valuation. I mean, hopefully not too much. But then after that, whether you bootstrapped or you raised that little pre-seed check, you need to build customer validation. I mean, they call it traction, but really what it is is customer validation. You need to know what it takes to that investor that you've now known because, you know, know your investor. What is it that would prove them that you're doing it right? So if you're Adam, uh, Adam Newman and you can raise money for WeWork, then great, because he managed to raise money before WeWork was even, was even a thing. Like he's basically managed to get people to invest a lot of money on, on the idea of, and the business principle. Now, not everyone can do that and not, and in Europe it's even harder. If you can, go for it. If you can't, this is the little tip that I give you. A lot of investors out there are looking for a million in revenue, whether they say that or not. People that fall into the late seed series A bracket, which is the majority of VCs today out there would look at that. So anything you do, if you're trying to get money from them, should be geared towards showing that you either have it or you are really on the path to get it. And this funding, say a late seed, is just what you need to get there. And it's a serious, you know, you've got some serious evidence to validate and back this claim. If you do that, you're gonna have many more doors open. You're not gonna see this in a lot of VC websites. So hence why I believe it it's worth you knowing this. Uh, it might not fit everyone though, in which case you can find the exception. Now, even though there has been a dip and even though 
you know, we're seeing a shift into what VCs are comfortable investing in. Not everyone is the same. Uh, and if you, not everyone is the same, that means that there are exceptions. Now, it is true that as of 20, 29, 2019, sorry, only 8% of VCs in Europe came from a startup background. Uh, actually, 4% came from tech at all. So, you know, it's a very, very small number of people that have walked your path if you're an entrepreneur. Um, but it's irrespective of that, either those or even others that have a very open-minded approach to venture, maybe more American approach to venture, they will still fund deals that are not necessarily ticking the more conservative boxes. You need to find them. Uh, and a good way to find them, for example, is you look them up on Crunchbase. How do you do that? You probably find a startup that aligns with what you think you have. Someone that has received, say, a Series A or a late seed funding uh, when, you know, or, or, a, or a full seed, you know, if you've done a pre-seed, you know, and you're in that sort of value of debt, you find someone that had your pedigree, you know, might be a competitor. It might just be someone that is doing something similar or someone that falls into uh, a similarity group with your company and then look back at who invested in them uh, and then work, 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 your, work your way back. Uh, so in a nutshell, if you're a startup to try and skip this phase of value of death, you know, to know your investors, you need to build customer validation to prove the bigger guys that you can get their money. And if you can't, you find an exception. I mean, even if you can, maybe you find someone that is in synergy with you and really like can back you and fund you uh, across this stage. Now, if you're an investor instead, why would you look at this value of debt? Well, the message is that there is money on the table. I mean, it's as simple as that, right? It's basic financial. Remember this slide? If there is an equity gap, basically that means it's an underinvested sector and because the startup deals are not, have not, opportunities have not gone down. Startups are still starting up. There is more deal flow potentially. And if everyone else is going up and the angels are staying there, there is an opportunity, right? So you can probably turn the death for you is an opportunity. Everyone else is climbing up or staying stuck because they don't have the means and you can probably find a good way to enter, which avoids the competition. Now for everyone else, why should you care? Actually, we should all care. We should all care because startups, if we look at, for example, a report from the Octopus Group, uh, created 84% 80 of the net employment growth in 2016 17 which is when they had done the last count up to in this report uh, from last year and you know what octopus call high growth some small businesses effectively startups uh, and the same report goes on into analyze that the gross value added to the economy is actually 113 billion so that does that does have an impact to everyone's life because of the impact that it has on the economy. And of course, because today most of the startups are in tech. If you look at the sec tech sector, Tech Nation tells us that there had, the sector has given a 6x, uh, has, has experienced a 6x growth in the market, um, the, this, the impact that basically it's gross impact it has having on the market that is had compared to everyone else. So whilst the economy might be growing at a certain speed, Tax is six times faster than that. Uh, and because it goes six times faster, it has an impact on everyone's life. But all, not all startups are created equal. And in fact, I mean, not all companies are created equal. Uh, startups are not SMEs. Startups are not small businesses. And that's an important point because there is a difference that we can actually quantify, and Octopus actually did it for us in that nice report, that startups are pretty much uh, fourth more productive than other businesses. It has basically a bigger impact on the economy overall. Um, and that impact is basically because startups are not the same as a company. Uh, and starting a, a shop doesn't have the same impact on the economy than starting a startup has uh, in terms of job creation, in terms of value produced for the economy. And so what we can do about it, since we know all these nice things, to try and counteract what we're seeing in the ecosystem is number one, start startups. I mean, if you do have an opportunity to launch your business as a tech startup and you have the right mindset and 
team and you're solving a real problem, try it. I mean, yes, seed investment is taking a dip, but remember, the very first pre-seed or early stage investing is actually going up. Uh, there is a lot of opportunity. The government is backing a lot of projects, even with grant funding. And then later on, there is a massive ecosystem growing. So yes, there is an in-between problem, but that problem is solvable, number one. Number two, there are investors that are investing in that stage. So if you do want to start a company, do it. Uh, and if you are already doing a startup or working at one, what you can do is adapt. Like I said before, you know, it's not impossible to get money even at that seed stage, even if you don't quite feel every single criteria uh, box in the mindset of an investor. You can still take a few of them and try to pitch your opportunity the right way. Potentially even consider going abroad. Um, if you have connections to the US or you know someone that can connect you to US investors, I've recently seen a community startup getting an angel from the US. It's not that common and it takes a little bit of work, but it can happen. Um, and therefore, keep going. I mean, once you pass that bridge, after Series A, mortality rate goes down. So your chances of actually making it are much higher. So keep at it. Um, if you're not in, in a startup yet, you might consider joining one. Why? Because we know what's happening out there with COVID and the impact on the economy is the way it is because effectively startups are one of the biggest engine today of job creation. There were a few casualties uh, during the peak of the pandemic from certain companies, but that's changing back. Startups are hiring a lot. And my personal bet and what we're seeing in the ecosystem is that that's going to continue. Therefore, if you are not already involved in the ecosystem, you might want to try uh, and potentially give advice or even join a startup. And the last thing that we potentially could all do if you're an investor, you definitely should do, uh, is to consider investing in seed startups. And investing in seed startups can take a lot of forms. And that's why I say it's something we should potentially all consider. Because the opportunities out there today in the UK, we're quite fortunate, are plenty. It might be from investing time by advising startups. I mean, I'm doing some pro bono mentoring myself. I know lots of other people in my space that do it. Uh, and it doesn't, you don't need to be in tech to do it because a lot of startups need help with so many other things. Uh, and then if you've got a few hundred pounds or thousands to spare, you can probably join Ciders or Crowdcube. Now they're merging, so soon you're not even going to have to pick or other opportunities to crowdfund. Again, something that everyone can do. I did it the other day, I've just put some money into startup. You know, it's so as easy as clicking. Uh, and, you know, everyone can do it. There is a long stock exchange. There are public funds, not a lot, but there is. There are, and there are VCTs that if you don't know where you, what they are, your financial advisor might advise you what they are. Now, I know that this starts to sound like, oh, are you trying to send me something? No, I'm not. Like, I, you know, I'm just saying there are opportunities. Uh, and the fact that seed is taking a dip is probably everyone's fault. It's probably everyone's fault because in Europe, we have this mentality. And I know it because everyone does it around me, everyone that I know from Italy, where I come from, to the UK, people save up some money, then what they do, they buy a house. They think that's an investment. Then if they save some more, they buy another house and they rent it out. If they become even richer, they buy a bar or a restaurant. And that's good, you know, that's a way to invest. But startups are having a massive impact. And if we are to become a digital economy, which COVID is forcing us to be, perhaps we should consider uh, also venture. And of course, then there are emerging managers. I mean, we started a fund, but there are hundreds of other people doing the same around, around Europe. Uh, and of course, there is direct investing. I mean, if you have the capacity to be an angel, why not consider it? So even with a hundred pounds on Cedars, you can be an investor. Uh, and if you don't want to put any money, you can probably spend some time in the ecosystem. This is where potentially we could be. China out there, US out there are dwarfing us. And even though we have got a kick starting position compared to everyone else in Europe, there is a lot of potential that we should harvest. Uh, and therefore, by being entrepreneurial, by supporting entrepreneurs, and that could be mentally, uh, I've seen so many entrepreneurs that told me nobody understand me. If you've got an entrepreneur in the family, again, that time, that support, not just the money, just encouraging people to take this path, not to go down the old same route. It's what we need in Europe, I feel. Uh, and therefore, here is the situation. 
seed investing, it's losing momentum. Potentially, we're all part of this. Potentially, the, back, the mindset that we bring along as Europeans, as even in the UK, is having its effect in the ecosystem. But startups are there. Uh, and therefore, if you are doing a startup or you're joining the ecosystem, I think you should consider what you could do in your own small world to really improve the situation and help the economy continue to grow. Uh, and this is kind of where I hope we can get to. US, China, why not? So thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I feel uh, we've managed to get it all in just uh, half an hour. I uh, hope I didn't bore you much. Uh, and if you do have any, any questions, I'm happy to stick around for a few minutes um, to answer anyone uh, that, yeah, if you do have a question, please, uh, please just shoot it out. Happy to stick around. If not, thank you very much for, for joining us today. So,